My name is Michal Aron. I present the work that was uh, previously uh, presented in uh, Lab Dab Lab recently. Uh, joined a uh, work with Amit and Oren from my team. So, uh, uh, as was introduced, uh, I run the prediction, actually, the ed science team in Yahoo Research, and we power all the science algorithm that control the selection and ranking of ads in Gemini Native. Gemini Native is one of the top products in Yao that uh, presents ad in uh, the context of reading content. Not search advertising, but native advertising in, uh, within a stream of stories or within mobile application and so on. Uh, so I want, the f as you uh, well known, for, uh, uh, for performing good selection and ranking of ads, uh, we must provide a CTR or CVR or view predictions uh, estimating the probability of the user to like the, the, this ad, to interact with it, um, accounting for this prediction and the bid provides us the, the required ranking. I'm not going to talk about the specific uh, prediction algorithm that we use. A version of it was once uh, uh, presented in Rexis uh, a few years ago. Um, I'm more going to talk about the, the way that we deploy this algorithm in production uh, and in online search. But just a one word about the algorithm. There are a lot of words, a lot of uh, uh, possibilities to represent uh, accuracy of uh, such a challenging predictions algorithm. Uh, one way that I uh, uh, select uh, to present here is, uh, is the following. I I, uh, actually, we took a um, batch of data uh, of several hours of serving, and we aggregated all the impressions for which a predicted CTR was given into different bins. So in the leftmost bin is all the events in which the predicted CTR was between 0% and 0.1%. Uh, in the next bin, it's all the, the events in which the predicted CTR was between 0.1% and 0.2% uh, and so on. So in the, the blue line actually represent the support, meaning the log of the number of events in each such bin. So you can see that uh, um, the largest number of events, of course, gets a very uh, small probabilities. Uh, and the, the red line show the ratio between the PCTR and the actual CTR. And you can see here that, for example, this, uh, this bar presents a, 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 a about 100K impression in which, for all of them, the prediction was between 1.5 to 1.6%, and the actual CTR was 1.53. Just to, to, to show uh, something about the accuracy. Okay, so some architecture background about how we actually run this, this algorithm. So offset, the algorithm that we use, run on a centralized process. <laughs> we cannot parallelize the algorithm itself, uh, and this uh, causes a, a, a great constraint that we have to handle. However, because of the, the dynamic nature of the environment that we work with, because of the so many new ads that are uh, constantly arriving, some around 10K new ads per day, we have to learn on the most recent available data. Uh, and these two uh, uh, generate uh, a big uh, challenge. So what we, uh, we, we did is we tried to actually uh, employ the MapReduce technique in order to, to uh, do this process as quick as possible as efficient as possible. And what we do here is that we actually divide the processing into two stages. The first stage is the pre-processing stage of every event. And the second is the actual learning. The pre-processing stage, which is the, takes more time, can be very easy parallelized because it just takes one uh, a day. For each pre-processing, we need just to, to see one line. However, uh, all the processing <coughs> afterwards is being done on a single uh, reducer. That's how we employ the map reduce algorithm to run uh, very efficiently uh, on a centralized algorithm. 
So that's more or less how we, each model runs. And if you look at this image, you can uh, quite easily imagine uh, how we can do parameter tuning on this algorithm because um, as similarly to any other uh, type of uh, algorithm, we have several meta parameters which we work with and we want to optimize. Uh, so the way for us to actually train and find the optimal set of meta parameter looking at this picture is actually re uh, quite trivial. Instead of learning only one model on all these pre-processed entries, we learn lots of different models. We do it more or less in the same time of learning a single model, and then after a, a period of time, we can evaluate all these models. We can pick the best one and uh, select it to uh, serve uh, the, the traffic in the future. Okay, but there are a lot of disadvantages of doing this tuning of meta parameters uh, offline. Uh, and I'll list some of these disadvantages. So for one, of one is, of course, that the number of configuration is still limited. Although we can run several models in parallel, even if we run 100 or 500 or even 1,000 models, it's still a limited, number, a limited set of parameters which uh, might not uh, suffice. Um, also, we have to run them on a limited time, time frame. So we can, for example, run it on a, a period of one week, um, which takes a few days. But then if we, if we do it, the model that is later picked is going to serve for, for weeks and months ahead. So I'm not sure that the model that is best after one week will continue to be best after three months. Um, and also a technical constraint that before deploying any model, we have to run it and to train it for several days. Another uh, um, family, if you may say, of disadvantages relates to the data that we deal with. We deal with a very dynamic and constantly changing data. We have uh, different uh, seasons, we have different advertisers, we have ends of quarter, we have uh, Christmas, uh, and uh, we have a very dynamic environment where advertisers come and go depending on their own uh, needs. And this also um, um, means a lot of changes that we have to do in our environment in order to accommodate. So the idea here was actually how to do this uh, uh, tuning of meta parameters in an online uh, fashion, and that is actually the, the, the subject of this talk. So looking at the, at the image that I showed before, it's not, it would, shouldn't be very hard to actually do it in an online fashion, meaning that every time there is a new data set to process, the mappers will pre-process and then provide these entries to all, a set, to a set of models that are constantly being trained in parallel. The best model in an online, in an online model, the best, we, we detect the best model, this one will continue to serve. And not only the, this, the best model out of the ones that we train will continue to serve, we want to push it one step forward and to say, okay, this is currently the best model. Let us find a new set of, uh, of models, of meta parameter uh, configuration set uh, seeding from the, this set uh, of meta parameters, uh, and that would be the set of candidates for the next training interval. So let me be more. Let me be uh, more detailed here. So let's say that we set the, the the training interval. Let it be four training periods, for example, one hour or twelve training periods. We also set the, the metrics, the offline metrics on which we uh, we decide to optimize on. It can be log loss, it can be uh, uh, OC. The S here stands for stratified OC, which is some kind of uh, metric that we use internally. Um, we, we also are given the set of the uh, we define actually the way that we generate this configuration set. For example, we take the seeding configuration set, uh, we take it 10% up or 10% down, 
in order to um, uh, generate three in the power of uh, p uh, new sets of configuration, where p is the number of, of parameters that we feel on. Um, and also we apply some constraint because sometimes we don't want uh, several parameters to reach very extreme values. And then in each repeating cycle, we generate the new set of hyperparameters we see from the best configuration that we found so far. We, pl we train all these candidates, all these configuration, and at each point in time, we know which is the best model so far. This is the model that continues to serve, and this is the model that will later be defined as the best for the next iteration to come. Uh, more details are in the paper, of course. So if you look at it, if we have some one set of metaparameters that we work with, we actually uh, uh, generate a set of metaparameters around it. We continue to train for another one hour or three hours. We find the best model. Then uh, we continue. We actually we generate a new set of uh, um, of configuration, uh, and so. On just to show you it in a, in a different schema, if we start with, let's say, 100 configuration, one of the models was selected to be the best. This configuration variants to 100 new, new uh, set of configuration. Uh, out of they continue to learn for a period of, let's say, one hour. One of the models is the best. This is the one to be serving, and so on. So we actually, in, at any given time, we can search the space of metaparameters um, and I, we can uh, say that we don't have a clue what, say, what metaparameters are currently being run in the model at each given time and indeed uh, they vary very frequently. Uh, this specific uh, work improved the uh, efficiency of the model uh, significantly, significantly so you can see a 4.8% improvement in CPM on the on the all traffic and a 12% CPM improvement on the our homepage, which is the main section uh, that the users are most engaged in, and it was ramped up to production last year. Um, just one thing to know: uh, there is a risk of divergence. It's very easy for the parameter to reach very extreme values. So first, we we apply some constraint on them, but since that it's not since that it's not enough. We also save a set of anchor configuration, uh, meaning a set of configuration that are stable, that are valid, that we that we that have a, a known value that we trust. So that every time the model goes to some extreme uh, uh, extreme uh, uh, position or extreme state, uh, it can always uh, return to this uh, anchor config. We also have an automatic process that can actually revert back and go back in time, say, if the current iteration, all models, all of the 100 models actually diverge in the, meeting of, in the middle of the training cycle, we go back, we can go back 15 minutes or, or 30 minutes or one hour, and so on. Um, future plan is, of course, to expand this work for optimizing more than just metaparameter. For example, the dimensionality of the vector is a very challenging uh, work. Uh, and maybe also to apply different type of technique uh, instead of just a, a trivial uh, a grid search that we did here. Thank you. that you actually referred to in your last point. The, the search uh, with uh, experimental design, uh, let in, uh, there are several approaches that could probably take you another step. Yes, yes, so, uh, so the number is the one. Currently there is no need because we're not limited in the number of configuration that we can apply. That's why we, we didn't do it in the first iteration. We, we have almost unlimited You want to call multiple parallel completing models. Um, that's uh, essentially a genetic algorithm. 
Yeah. You have um, uh, both natural selection and mutation, like giving the parameters to perform mutations. And it's very interesting. Yes, you're completely right. And the, this analogy was uh, presented to me before, and I, I found it uh, quite uh, surprising. But it, it wasn't uh, started from there, but I, I agree with you in comparison. 